Hi everyone, this is Bryn. The new version 2.0 firmware for the GoPro Hero 4 Black and Silver Edition cameras has some excellent new features. One of them is time-lapse video. Let's have a look at how to set it up and how to use it. First thing to do is turn your camera on and when it starts up, it will go to your default mode, in this case, video. Press the settings button on the side of the camera to go to video settings. Then press the shutter button to change the mode from video to time-lapse video. You can use the power mode button to move down and then change your interval using the shutter button. The available options range from 0.5 seconds up to 60 second intervals. You can also select between the two available resolutions. There's 4K or 2.7K in a 4-3 ratio. When you're done, press the settings button again to exit the settings menu. When you've set up your camera in your time-lapse location, simply press the shutter button to start recording. Unlike time-lapse photos, where the number of photos taken can be seen in the front LCD screen, you'll notice instead that the counter will show seconds of video captured, since time-lapse video creates a single MP4 video file. Note that if you're using the 0.5 second interval option, then you'll need to record for at least 15 seconds to capture one second of video played back at 30 frames per second. If you were to use the 60 second interval option, then you would need to record for at least 30 minutes just to have one second of footage. So you need to plan accordingly. I've included a link to a time-lapse calculator spreadsheet in the description below. And if you want, you can download it directly from Dropbox. Let's look at a couple of time-lapse video sequences that I recorded earlier. The first is 4K. The quality is excellent and the results are already in widescreen. The second is 2.7K in the 4-3 ratio, which results in some still very good quality, but creates some black bars down the side. Which option you choose will depend on how you intend to share your time-lapse videos. For example, YouTube's default player is widescreen. So if you intend to upload your videos to YouTube, 4K may be the best choice. Whereas the 2.7K 4.3 ratio more closely resembles Instagram's square ratio player. So footage can be uploaded to Instagram with minimal loss from the sides of your video. Of course, the 2.7K 4.3 video can also be easily adjusted later on in an editing program to stretch it out to widescreen with minimal distortion. Okay, let's go back to my location demo. Once you think you have enough footage, press the shutter button again to stop recording. The Hero 4 has been recording 4K time-lapse video at half second intervals for just over 10 minutes, which resulted in 31 seconds of video. Note, it is possible to upload your time-lapse videos direct to YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram via the GoPro app. I'll cover this in another video sometime. However, the following limitations should be noted. Instagram videos can only be a maximum of 15 seconds long. And because the majority of mobile devices are unable to play back 4K and 2.7K effectively, only low resolution versions can be uploaded. Therefore, the best option is to transfer the MP4 file created in the camera to your computer. The quickest method is to remove the card from the camera and insert the card into a USB 3 card reader. If you don't have USB 3, you can still transfer the files using an SD card adapter. 
or the third but slowest method of transfer is to plug your GoPro camera directly into your computer using a USB cable. Once you've transferred the MP4 file, you can immediately watch it back on your computer. Note, some people may have trouble viewing 4K or 2.7K video if their computer is not up to scratch. If the video freezes or it's jerky, then it may be time for an upgrade. If you're happy with the results, you could choose to upload the time-lapse video straight to social media sites in high quality. Or you can import the file into an editing program to make changes such as slowing it down, speeding it up, color correction and even adding music, etc. Once you've made the changes you want, you can now choose to render the video using either 4K or 2.7K render settings. Or I can downscale it to 1080p. You might ask, why create a 4K video and then downscale it? Well, one reason is that 4K produces a huge file in very high quality. My internet connection is not the best and it takes forever to upload the file to YouTube and uses up all my bandwidth while doing so, so I can't use it for anything else. However, I find that the 4K time-lapse video, downscaled to 1080p, creates a time-lapse that looks even smoother and better quality than using the time-lapse photo method. I think time-lapse video is a great new feature and it will help to make it a lot easier for people to create fantastic time-lapse sequences. This is Bryn, thanks for watching.